How's it going, everybody? Got a bit of a, a box here with a kit. This is supposed to be a simple kit that anyone can make because it requires no soldering. This is the Antique Wireless Association's Morse Assistive Technology Trainer, or MAT, M-A-T-T. And it comes in this little Ziploc bag here. I've got my iPad here with the instructions already loaded on it. Let's uh, unbag this and lay the parts out and maybe build ourselves a code oscillator. Now I'll post the links in the description. Uh, this is the address to find the kits, instructions, and video. This goes for about $19 on the website and it advertises that it is a new STEM teaching tool that comes as a hands-on kit. It can be used to teach basic electronics, the science of waves, Morse code, and assistive communication technologies, among other STEM topics, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's, it's all screw-based, no soldering connections. It's all screws here, which, you know, makes it pretty easy for, for even a, a younger person to, to do, which is great. You know, that's exactly the kind of thing that would be perfect for a, a kid or, you know, someone to to take a look at. The parts list is very small. There's not a lot to this. And again, this is all done with a series of, of screws here. This is a PCB that is printed, custom printed with large spots here for washers and screws to go through. And it comes on a wooden base that has been pilot hole drilled. So you just simply um, lay the board on top and follow the instructions. Now, the, the printing of this PCB, I'll mention this up front because you're going to see it as I move along. This is designed to always have one solid point of connection. So if you see this R1 resistor value here, right? This R1, this R1 resistor value, uh, it's always going to have a solid point here, but when it connects to the transistor at Q1, uh, that's going to be the loose screw. But guess what? This transistor also has a firm fixed point. So you're always gonna start on the firm fixed point of any part, and then as you tether them together, those will be the loose screws that you're gonna put the lead down below to make the connection. In total, there are 20 screws and 19 washers to make this all work. And there are a couple of special size screws, so make sure you're paying attention as you're pulling them out because they're not all the same. So make sure you follow the instructions. The instructions are very straightforward uh, as I've seen so far. But let's let's go ahead and build this. Required tools, it calls for a one and a two Phillips screwdriver, small needle nose pliers, and some diagonal cutters. It does require a nine volt battery to power this and there is a, a power lead that is in the parts bag here. All right, so step one is to take a number six screw and screw it into the base right in the lower right hand corner. This is where the contact is made. This is a straight key oscillator, which comes with a PCB printed key lever for your straight key. These screw holes are pilot hole drilled, but you will, you know, work a little bit. And it says, you know, snug it up, but make sure the holes are still aligned, which is what I'm, I'm verifying right there, which looks like I've, I've done an okay job at that. So I'll, I'll give it a little bit more while I'm holding it. And there we go. This kit comes with three transistors. So you don't have to worry about picking out the wrong part when you do this next step. But this next step is kind of important that you do correctly. These need to be bent in a very specific way and it's not the same for both of them. Um, you're only gonna do use two for this. So take your other one and put it aside somewhere you won't lose it. All right, so the process for this and do follow the images while you while you do this, but you're gonna grab one of the legs here and you're gonna fold it directly out in a way so that it can sit flat. Okay, be careful here because once you start bending the legs like this, um, you will get to a point where they are stressed enough and you will not be able to bend them again. So try to do it one shot and then that's it. Don't mess with it anymore. So the thing to remember here is we're bending the legs to match the PCB. So if you get into trouble, just look at how it's supposed to be aligned on the PCB. So this guy's leg is supposed to splay out this way. So I'll do that now. Close enough. Uh, it's going to sit kind of like that right there. 
So that's kind of the, one of the first steps is to bend the legs to match the PCB. And you're going to be wrapping the, the leads. Um, it's going to be sandwiched between the PCB base and a, and a washer. So just keep that in mind. Now do the same thing for uh, Q2, transistor 2, which is right here. Okay, we've got two bodged up transistors here. Just like that. All right, this next step is probably the most manually intensive portion of the whole thing. We now need to install the screws with washers into holes uh, basically 1 through 15, but omitting 6 and 12. These are three-point junction spots, so we're going to do those later. It sounds like 1 through in that order, so I guess starting here at the corner and working our way down. Whoop. The instructions say to screw all the way down firmly, firmly not too uh, too tight. You don't want to, you know, damage the the PCB material, particularly the conductive area, and then back off three turns or four turns. So one, that's four turns is a lot. So I'll, I'm going to go with amount of much space as it takes to get the wire underneath there. I'm going to elicit some help. All right, so this is my Milwaukee impact driver. It's one of my favorite tools in my shack or in my garage and i've got it set to one here so uh, i'm gonna go pretty much to the point that i've got space and then i'm gonna pull it back so no no need to worry guys i'm sure i won't damage anything it's not that i can't do this by hand i just don't see a reason to such precise control with the milwaukee fuel line of tools Great for all your electronic hobby uh, kits. What control? Look at that trigger, that trigger discipline. All right, it's time to lay down the parts. So we're gonna go ahead and pull out the power lead. We'll get to that last. And pull out some resistors here. Only a couple resistors, one capacitor, three transistors. Oh, uh, take that back, two capacitors. Here's the clip for the nine volt. We'll play around with that here shortly. Oh, so there's four capacitors. Uh, I'm sorry, transistors. I uh, I miscounted. Probably make sure that those are all the same. They are. That makes things a little bit easier. Okay. First resistor is red, red, brown, gold, which there are two of those. Pretty easy. I don't even know that I can screw this one up, guys, but you know. Keep watching, maybe maybe you'll get lucky. All right, so I'm, I'm literally just following the PCB diagram here. I'm gonna lay it out exactly as it defines it. So the um, instructions are that the wire is supposed to go underneath the washer, which is what I'll do. And then you're gonna make a half turn over like that. And then this guy goes underneath the washer for the next part. That is a doubled up part though. So just remember, you probably don't want to screw that one down yet. I'll go ahead and tighten this one up. That's probably good enough. All right, the next one is that transistor we bent. So now I'm gonna find him, here he is. This guy goes underneath there, underneath there. It sits about like that. So I'll go ahead and tighten this guy down. Whoop, 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 whoop. Or not. Makes you almost want to solder these puppies on, right? like that seems good I'm gonna go ahead and trim the ends here and on this guy so I can get him out of there clear up some space all right now this one is a special screw where we need to put a washer on top of the lowest component and then there's going to be a wire that goes in between so we're gonna entrap the semiconductor, I'm sorry, the transistor, 
So two washers just went on. The transistor is below the lowest washer. And then R2 and C1 will go underneath the middle washer before getting locked in. And remember, we're going to entrap them using these screws, tighten them down on both sides before we try and work with the middle. All right, this guy is a 10K ohm brown, black, orange, gold resistor. It's going to go right here. And how I'm doing that is I'm just kind of going under here, pushing on the washer from behind and waiting for it to pop up. There we go. Got it underneath there. I'm going to feed the wire around the post, give it a, a half turn, and tighten it down. Okay. And then I'll do a little snip. Okay. Now, uh, I seem to have already did exactly what I needed. I've got the semiconductor, sorry, I've got the transistor again below the, wa the lowest washer, and the resistor under the second washer, and then the screw head. The next thing I need to do is get the capacitor set up going this way. Yep, indeed, that's how it's supposed to be done. So I'm going to come over the top. Over the top, remember that? Who remembers that, kids? It's about a man who has to arm wrestle to win back his kid. A true American story. All right, so the good news for me is that these capacitors are all the same, so I just need to grab one of them. We're gonna we're gonna kind of bend this leg out a little bit, bend this leg out, and kind of give it a, a little bit of an elbow there. All right, I'm gonna go underneath the washer like before. This one's screwed in too far. You kind of have to think a little bit different when you're doing a build like this. So just soldering parts. I'm not familiar like with with this concept, but I know there's people that do this. I know this is like a, a way that people build kits. It's kind of not. Something I would think of doing, but you know, here we are, willing to try. Um, so capacitor goes like that. Get a half bend on the screw. Okay, he's about right. All right, so now this guy, he needs to go underneath the screw here. So I'm gonna. I right, got two resistors, a transistor, and the capacitor in place. I'm guessing we start over on this guy now. Is that right? Yep, sure enough. And that's gonna be a gray red black gold a 82 ohm resistor it looks like this goes over the top again and our other friend the transistor comes out he's going to slide under this guy and under this guy so trim the leads here resistor and transistor in place r3 brown black orange Brown, black, orange, gold is R3. It's time for another two for washer screw. So I'm gonna move this guy out of the way a little bit. These screws go right over the top of the transistor. Uh, the washer, base washer goes on the top, sandwiching the transistor leg up against the PCB. I'm leaving a pretty appreciable gap here so that I can slide the resistor leg in between the two washers like a sandwich like a sandwich and then i believe i've got to bring the capacitor around i do okay that's in there pretty good all right so i believe the the way to do this is this leg is going to go around the outside so we're going to go nope oh, should kick the resistor out This guy's gonna come over. Come on. Ah. This is probably the hardest connection I've made in this kit. To get this to sandwich between the... Pretty good. All right. 
carefully cut the leads. Carefully cut the leads. So we don't short. All right, we're down to our last resistor here. Red, red, gold. Red, red, brown, gold. Okay, geez. <laughs> like, oh God, I already screwed up. How did I screw this up? Resistor in place. That was a 220 ohm resistor. All right, now we got this key. It's got to go right there. Let's figure out the next steps here. Oh, the next steps is we need to do the uh, power lead actually. So I was a little premature in screwing this down. I forgot about that. Take off a bit. Take off a bit more of the, the shielding. They make it so easy even I can't screw this part up maybe. They say red and black. So I know how that goes, I think. I'm not colorblind. Let's install that clip here with the two very small screws. Clips in place. All right, so this is pretty straightforward. These screws, these nuts here have to go like that. The two three quarter number six screws like a so. Okay. Help. Okay, they gave you extra they give you extra washers in case you need to raise this up some. But there should be a gap between the key your straight key here which there is. So I think we're done. Let me check my work here really fast. Uh, this has a tiny charge to it. Let's see if it works. It probably won't. Ah, oh, it did. I was using my thumb for that, so I apologize. All right, took a moment to get some uh, uh, nine volt batteries here. Check these out. These are USB-C rechargeable. Thanks to Adam K6ARK for recommending these. These will actually run mountain topper radios. But anyway, let's uh, let's plug it in and, and try it out here. So it snaps into the plug and it's got a little clip. Goes into the clip. Oh, come on. There you go. Uh, it's a little on the a little on the quiet side. I'm gonna hold it up to the mic. and I'm doing with my thumb. Uh, but anyway, it is a little on the quiet side. That might be because I put the wrong resistor in maybe. I I'll have to go back and look. If you were practicing on your own, it's gonna be just fine in a quiet room. Little quiet for potentially a classroom. So keep that in mind. Also, some of you, um, I posted a picture of this on my Instagram and some of you mentioned that it's got the Morse code, international Morse code here. There's a lot of schools of thought that Having this displayed is not good because it teaches you to um, memorize dits and daws instead of just hearing an A, right? An R or whatever. Uh, so you can put a sticker over this if you don't want to. At least it gives the kids an idea or a young person or whomever you give this to of what the characters are. I know a lot of times we say it's best to learn the code by receiving, but you know, I, I think this is still a pretty cool little kit and definitely cool in the fact that you can have uh, these simple screwed on connectors. So big thank you to the Antique Wireless Association for sending the Morse Assistive Technologies trainer, the mat. Pretty inexpensive, $19 is the shipped price and a pretty fun little kit. So thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up, 73.